All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to start talking about section two of chapter four, uh, niches and community interactions. Uh, a quick one today, but some good stuff, so pay attention. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to do these things, and you should know these key terms. Cool. All right, so we're going to start out talking about the niche. Uh, now, I know this is a weird word. It's actually a French word, um, and it has several pronunciations, okay? Uh, I think the European pronunciation is niche, uh, or it can also be said as a niche. Uh, but in America, I think we say the niche. So call it what you may be. We'll be talking about the niche or the niche, okay? And a niche is the range of physical and biological conditions in which a species lives and obtains what it needs to survive, okay? So this niche is kind of this holistic idea uh, of how an organism, a single organism or a species, survives in an ecosystem, okay? And it includes all the physical and biological uh, conditions that are necessary for life. Okay, so each individual organism uh, that's living in a species has its own niche. So there is no just one niche for a whole ecosystem. Uh, let's use the example of when we went, out, went outside of school and looked at that ecosystem, right? That's not a niche. Every individual organism in that ecosystem has its own niche. So a squirrel has a niche, a very specific physical and biological conditions it needs to survive. Uh, the trees has a very specific niche. Um, Birds have a very specific niche, right? It's very specific to each individual organism, okay? Uh, so an example we'll take, which we saw outside in our lab, right, uh, is these two guys right here. This on the log is moss, okay? All this green furry stuff is moss. Uh, and this stuff that kind of looks like a splattered piece of scrambled egg or something, okay? This is a lichen. Um, and a lichen is actually two organisms living together. It's an algae. Uh, something that's doing photosynthesis type organism that actually lives with a fungus. And that's why we get all these crazy shapes here. So the lichen is actually two organisms living together. All right, but to start studying the niche, we're going to compare moss and lichen, right? We both know, have seen them around. We saw them outside in our lab. Both grow on either rocks or trees or dying logs, okay? Uh, and they each have a very specific niche or very specific physical and biological conditions which allow them to survive. All right, so the first thing that determines an organism's niche, all right, the first one is tolerance, okay? Each species, like we said, has its own niche. It also has its own tolerance, okay? And tolerance is the ability to survive under a range of environmental circumstances, all right? So it's the ability to survive under specific circumstances. Um, and tolerance, basically, or where an organism survives, determines its habitat. Okay, and habitat is a general place where an organism lives. Um, so talking about the niche, right, we have these first three steps here. It really, like we said, the niche is a specific physical and biological conditions an organism needs to survive. All right, and that leads us to tolerance, okay? And tolerance is how an organism survives, right, what physical stuff it needs to survive. Uh, and then the stuff it needs to survive determines the habitat or where an organism is going to live. Okay, so some of the things, let's just take the moss here, for example. Some of the things it's going to need to survive is sunlight. It's going to need nutrients, whether from soil or from a tree. It's going to need water. Okay, those would be three things. Uh, a squirrel, on the other hand, to be able to survive and reproduce is going to need food. Uh, it's going to need water. It's going to need air, oxygen. It's going to need other squirrels, right? It's going to have to find a mate. So, like we said, for each individual organism in an ecosystem, the niche can be very different. All right, and an organism's niche becomes very important when we start to talk about these community interactions, okay? So, like we said, tolerance determines habitat, all right? The organism's ability to survive and reproduce, okay, is going to determine where it lives. Uh, a squirrel can't survive in the Arctic, so its niche would not be in the Arctic, right? Um... And a perfect example of how we're going to talk about how organisms start to interact with each of their niches are going to interact. Uh, we'll talk about our friends, the moss and the lichen, okay? Um, so this is really what we call competition, okay? So competition is when organisms are going to compete against each other 
uh, for what's called resources, okay? And a resource is anything that an organism needs to survive. And it can be abiotic uh, resources, or it can be biotic, right? So organisms need uh, water, air, uh, soil. Maybe they just need a lot of space to grow, right? Those would all be abiotic factors. Biotic factors maybe would be prey, right? Maybe animals need to prey on other animals. That's a biotic resource, okay? Uh, sunlight is a resource. So competition right, is when different organisms, either of the same species or of different species, um, are competing and trying to get the most resources, okay, which are abiotic or biotic factors that allow an organism to live, okay? And this, again, it all comes back to defining the niche, the very specific area and way an organism can live in a community uh, and interact with other ones. With our organisms. So let's take moss here, right? Uh, like we said, moss and lichen both grow on trees, okay? And let's say two factors or resources, okay, that are going to determine the growth uh, of an ecosystem, right, of moss and lichen is going to be moisture and sunlight, okay? So as we move along the x and the y axis, right, as we move along the x axis, sunlight is going to increase. As we move along the y, moisture increases. Okay, so moss are usually found up here. They don't like as much sun, but they definitely like a lot more moisture. Okay, so let's say this area right here is going to be the niche for moss. Okay, not as much sunlight, definitely more moisture. Um, now let's take lichen. Okay, they can definitely take a little bit more sunlight. So they're going to be more sunlight heavy, but they also need moisture, right? Both these organisms are doing photosynthesis. So moisture and sunlight are two crucial resources for their survival, all right? So as we notice, right, they don't exactly take up the same space in terms of needs for resources, but they do share a part, okay? And basically what's going to happen in this middle area, right, uh, nothing will be able to survive. So we can cross all this out, okay? So in this area uh, where moss and lichen overlap, okay, and needs of moisture and sunlight, nothing's going to survive. So on in a place where there's going to be more sunlight, the lichen will, will survive. In a place where not as much moisture, uh, or not as much sunlight, but more moisture, the moss will survive. Okay, and this idea is called the competitive exclusion principle. Okay, and it, the competitive exclusion principle states that no two species can occupy exactly the same niche in exactly the same habitat in exactly the same time, right? So the, the moss and the lichen cannot literally be in the same place in the same time in the same niche because they're competing for resources, right? If both of them were growing right here, they would not be able to survive, okay? Competitive exclusion principle. So since neither of them can survive in the same place, this allows them to develop their own niche, right? The moss is only going to take take root and grow up in this area, whereas the lichen is only going to be down here, right? And if we go back to uh, our picture of the log here, right, we see, right, we see the competitive exclusion principle, except for these little two pieces of moss right here, right? This lichen has taken up this spot on the log, probably a very su sunny spot with the sun coming down through the leaves on the trees above, uh, whereas the moss here, right, you notice there's no lichen growing around by the moss, right? Each of them has their own place to grow. This is the competitive exclusion principle. Okay, so that's it for today, talking about niches and community interactions. I would definitely go back, watch it again, just so you understand all the relationships between the terms we've talked about. And again, if you have any questions, email me or tweet at me tonight, and we'll see you in class tomorrow. See you, kids. Peace.